Y'all, it has been hotter than heck here in Texas the past several weeks, and I'm definitely in the mood for some fall weather and the cooler temperatures it'll bring. So to jumpstart that, I'm sharing three fall signs for with y'all today, with y'all, for y'all today, with y'all today, and they're definitely gonna add a fall vibe to your space. On this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor, and if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. I have met so many cool and awesome people in this DIY community, and one of them is Ellie from DIY From House to Home. She invited seven of us, me included, to join her on a playlist called Is It Fall Yet? And in the description box below, I'm gonna link to DIY From House to Home, Teresa B. DIY, Crafty Co., Andrea Peacock DIY, Happiness Created, Freckled Mom DIY and Rustic and Lace DIY. This little sign is cute and it's from the Dollar Tree. I use my scraper tool, also from Dollar Tree, and my heat gun to remove the little plaque in the middle. And I'm able to get some of the paper off, but not all of it. So I take a wet rag and place it on top of the paper to help soak it off. I use my little razor or scraper thingy, you see it there on the left. And yeah, you can get those at Dollar Tree too like I said before, and I use that rag to kind of scrape and rub off the remaining paper. I can't remember where I saw the inspo for this sign, but I thought it was super cute, and so I cut out the decal using my Cricut. Remember how I used a wet rag to get that paper off? Well, I did let it dry overnight, and then I took some folk art paint in the color white to paint it. And I don't actually know what the sign is made of. I think it's like, I don't know, like a thin MDF or maybe like chipboard or like a thick cardboard. Anyway, if you know, tell me in the comments below. But um, now what I do know is that whatever this is made of, soak that paint right up. I could not get a smooth surface and I even tried sanding it. But what I think I'll try next time is to put down maybe like a layer of Mod Podge to give it a smoother surface to start with and then paint. At this point, it's just a matter of transferring that decal onto the sign. And of course, I'm using my Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape. I freaking love that stuff, y'all. Don't let anyone tell you that you have too many pumpkins. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. This turned out so stinking cute, simple and easy, and it's going to look great on my mantle. For DIY number two, my original thought was to either use the two smaller wood signs or the two larger wood signs to create one big sign. Now these are all from Dollar Tree, by the way, and they have the larger ones with the cutout at the top in stores with like each season, you know. My concern was the seam that was gonna be in the middle and how that was gonna affect my sign. And also I really did need a wider sign, so I changed my mind and went with the Hobby Lobby sign I already had. Hobby Lobby has a selection of signs like this in the spring shop. They're 66% off right now. Last year, they went down to 90%, and that's where I got the sign I'm using for today's project. But these signs have like, you know, like a little etching or something there to make that design. And so I'm taking that joint compound and just lathering it on. <laughs> and then um, that's gonna fill in those holes and give me a good blank to work with. So this is how it looks the next day after that joint compound has dried. And of course, I did not try to smooth it out because I really wanted it to cover all those crevices. I didn't want to have to do a second coat. So now I'm just taking the sanding block from Dollar Tree and I'm sanding over it. And this creates a heck of amount of dust. So if you're doing it inside, be very aware of that. Um, it'd be good to wear a mask especially if you're in an enclosed place with not a lot of good ventilation. Um, I'm out in my garage and I'm fixing to put my mask back on to finish sanding this. I'll sand it smooth and then you really can't, you really can't even tell that there is anything on there or there was anything on there and makes it for a nice clean surface and makes you a really good blank for a lot less money. And at this point, what I do is I put my hand on one end and then I close my eyes and I kind of just run and so I feel something right here and sure enough I open my eyes it's the edge of some of the joint compound so that just kind of gives me an idea I don't want to feel any like um, significant there's a raise right here and that's another you know again 
um, another area that just needs sanding a little bit more. But this really makes for a really smooth surface. Although this is really messy, this cost me um, $24.99. It was 90% off when I bought it, so I bought it for $2.50. It's hard to beat that. I'm gonna stain the frame and the back of the sign with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I just paint it on and then wipe it off with a damp scrap piece of cloth or you can use like a baby wipe or something like that. And to determine how much vinyl I need to cut, cause I don't, I cut to the size I need. This is um, four inches. And so I'm gonna cut it to five, even though it's not quite five. And then this goes all the way down to 22 inches, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to 23 because that way I just know that I'm gonna have enough vinyl. I order my vinyl from Expressions Vinyl. No, I order it from 143 Vinyl. Anyway, I got this from 143 Vinyl. It's StarCraft Permanent Adhesive Vinyl. One thing to note though is it does give you squares so you can kind of line it up with your mat, but see how this right here? That's not, it's not a full square, so just keep that in mind when you're cutting. Captain is helping. So I ended up not cutting it down to size, even after I just told you I was cutting it down to size. But I'm gonna go ahead and click continue on here. And it's connecting, setting base material. So I need to switch this to vinyl. I had made stickers earlier, and so I had it on poster board. And now, oh, <laughs> now this is to load your mat. So you put your mat right up like this underneath those two little guides there's a guide right here and a guide on that side you put it right under there push this it loads it on there and then you push that little C and it's gonna start making it On your desktop or if you're using your phone it's gonna tell you what percentage it is complete so yeah. okay now it's complete and so you just push that to finish unloading your mat and you can kind of see where the letters are so the Cricut is ready to load the next mat and so I'm gonna take it look take a look at Matt where's my cursor Take a look at mat number two, and it's the pumpkin spinal leaves. It's the other half of the sign. And I wanted to show you, you're also gonna know which mat you're cutting because it's gonna be the one that's highlighted. So I'm cutting mat number two. Another trick when you're working with your Cricut, don't pull the vinyl away from the mat, pull the mat away from the vinyl. And you can bend it <laughs> a lot so that that'll keep it from curling up and you just, Go down until you're at the end. I keep pressing down and peeling back. And I try to press the vinyl down pretty firmly. Um, I don't know, it's called burnishing it down, I think. <laughs> I don't know, but I just press it really firmly and then the light is already blinking. The light is already blinking, so you're gonna load your mat again. This is mat number two. I do have another Cricut mat that I could have just already prepped, but you know, I didn't. Load it up and it's ready to go. Push that blinking button. Captain has to be near me about 90% of the time. And so, yeah, he's in my office assisting, supervising. It's almost done. It's got like 4% left. And then he'll of course be in the way, but it's okay. Let's see if he moves. What the heck? The vinyl that I'm using is a permanent vinyl, but it just feels like extra sticky to me for some reason. And as I was weeding this, it was sticking to itself and it messed up two of the words. So to avoid that, I really try to just pull back a little bit of the vinyl and cut away the excess. But thankfully, this was something where I could just recut those two words to fix it. But 
Uh, it was like just annoying. <laughs> It's time to paint the inside of the sign, so I'm just taping off the frame. And I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Fern. And y'all, I have really been feeling those green colors lately. I don't know why. I'm attaching the two words that I had to fix, and of course, Captain has to be involved. <laughs> and I'm using that paper transfer tape again, and carefully applying it to the sign. And then I press down firmly to make sure the vinyl stays put and then I remove the transfer tape. The L in the word candles didn't transfer and got stuck, but thankfully it was still in um, good to use and I just put it on with some tweezers. And you just repeat the process with the other half of the sign. And this is how it turned out. I really love it. I love that I chose the green and I, don't, I just think it looks so good and I can't wait for fall so I can put it out. Oh, hey, hey, how are y'all doing? I hope you're enjoying the video so far. And if you are, if you would give me a thumbs up. That really helps support my channel and helps me to share my DIYing with the rest of people that might want to see it. <laughs> so, I don't know. Okay, let's get back to crafting. Bye. Isn't this fall essential sign super cute? It's from Kirkland's and I think it was from last year. Now this is a dupe of that exact sign and I saw this over on Whitney's channel. Oh, I'm saying it like I know her. Whiskey and Wit. Anyway, I watch her all the time. I've linked her video below where she created the sign. I loved it and I wanted to try it for myself, but y'all keep in mind, I've only done one heat transfer project in my life and that was the tote bag that came with my Cricut Press. So this project was a bit more intricate. In the woodpile section of Hobby Lobby, things usually go on sale about every other week. Now this canvas sign is in that section, so I think it would be a part of the sale, but don't quote me on that. And it's the exact same concept as the sign that I'm gonna be making, and it's $9.99, and with 40% off, it'd be about six bucks. I decided to make this sign using my own, with my own materials, and so I got a canvas drop cloth, and you can get one like this for around $12 at Walmart. You will also need four five-gallon paint stir sticks, and you can get a pack of three for $2 at Lowe's, or less than a dollar at Walmart. Okay, I get all my wood from Lowe's and for an eight foot, it's $8.24. And for a 10 foot, it is $10.30. And this is what it looks like. It's just, you know, I mean, it's just like a stick. <laughs> so, um, and it's called General Purpose Pine Lattice Unfinished. And I got the 10 foot one. Lowe's will cut it for you for free. And when I say when they'll, they'll cut it for free, I mean, I think like the first cut or three cuts is free. And then they charge you, I don't know, 50 cents or something beyond that. But um, I just had it cut in half so I could fit it in my car. And then I just used my miter saw, as you'll see in a second. Um, and that's how I cut it down. And sometimes where they cut the wood, which is this big machine here, they have little scrap pieces of wood and sometimes they'll get them for free, sometimes they'll charge you a buck or two. Here I am with my miter saw, and yes, I am being super careful to not cut my fingers, but honestly, it's a fast and easy way to cut the wood down to size. The first thing to note about this heat transfer vinyl that I got from Hobby Lobby, it's the Paper Studio stuff, it has no grid lines. Now, I don't think any of the heat transfer vinyls have grid lines, but if you're thinking, oh, I just need to count down the squares and I'll know how much to cut, this does not have grid lines. So I'm gonna have to measure out against my mat to figure out how long I need it and then just go all the way across. Another fun fact about this roll is it's, it's only the length of this mat. So um, if I mess up, <laughs> I will have to go get another roll tomorrow. So I don't think this was a very good value. I'll have to look on 143vinyl.com and expressionsvinyl.com to see the pricing, um, you know, because I don't know, it just doesn't feel, feels a little expensive. But anyways, um, one thing to remember is when you put this down, you put the shiny side down. See, there's a matte side and a shiny side. This is the carrier sheet. You put that face down on your mat. 
I cut the paint stir sticks down to 12 inches each and you'll need four of them and I'm staining them with Waverly Wax in the color antique. Just paint it on, wipe it off with a damp cloth or a baby wipe. This is the canvas drop cloth I used and I cut it, uh, cut a piece out 12 inches by 17 inches and I'm not sure what the deal is with this but Captain is really loving laying on it, rolling on it. I don't know, must have some sort of scent on it. I used the heat press to iron out the wrinkles on that little drop cloth piece. Y'all, weeding this heat transfer vinyl is nothing like regular vinyl. The carrier sheet is sticky, but the vinyl is not. It feels kind of, I don't know, like light. I'm not even sure how to describe it, like flaky almost. And you have to pull hard on it to get it off. I mean, like tear it like you're gonna tear it hard. So anyway, the script font I used was White Love and there were some really small spots that needed weeding and I forgot to time how long it took me, but it was a process. And because I don't have any experience, I really wasn't sure how easily it would be to place the decal and then pick it back up to move it. Spoiler alert, it was pretty easy, but I was definitely trying to place it in the right spot the first time. You set your heat press to about 320 and I kept mine on for about 30 seconds on each area. I let it cool and then I peeled back the carrier sheet. Y'all, I was trying to be careful because I did not want to mess this up because <laughs> it just took me a long time. And then I used a hot glue gun and glued two paint stick stir sticks on to the front, one at the top and the bottom. And I flipped it over and hot glued a stir stick to the bottom. And then I turned it so I could do one on the top. But before I glued on the last paint stir stick, I added a piece of jute twine so it would be glued in between. And I did that so I could hang it. And then I glued on the last paint stir stick. Y'all, this turned out so cute. Okay, maybe it's not centered 100%, but you know what I mean? Overall, it turned out so cute. I think Whitney would be proud of me. Hey girl, if you're watching, um, I love it. Y'all tag her in the comments below, but I'm serious. I love how it turned out. Thank you for the inspiration, Whitney. It, it was just a fabulous project. And despite it being my first real project and I probably took on too hard of a project, I think it turned out pretty good. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company while I'm crafting and creating. And I hope you enjoyed the DIYs that I made today. And if you did, be sure and give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and um, don't forget if you wanna follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.